fact that a person qualifies for a diagnosis of Oxford-defined chronic fatigue syndrome, CFS, either of the CDC definitions of CFS or the Australian CFS definition, A, does not mean that the patient has myalgic encephalomyelitis, and B, does not mean that the patient has any other distinct and specific illness named CFS. A diagnosis of CFS, based on any of the CFS definitions, can only ever be a misdiagnosis. The reason for this is that despite the fact that the new name and definition of CFS were created in response to an outbreak of what was un unmistakably ME, this new name and definition did not describe the known signs, symptoms, history and pathology of ME. It described a disease process which did not and could not exist. As ME expert Dr Byron Hyde explains, any disease process that has major criteria of excluding all other disease processes is simply not a disease at all, it doesn't exist. The CFS definitions were written in such a manner that CFS becomes like a desert mirage. The closer you approach, the faster it disappears and the more problematic it becomes. ME and CFS should be separated as definitions, they are not the same. Today there are more than nine different CFS definitions. All each of these flawed definitions define is a mixed population of people suffering with various misdiagnosed psychiatric and miscellaneous non-psychiatric states and diseases which have little in common but the symptom of fatigue. This is why being diagnosed with any of the definitions of CFS is not a meaningful diagnosis and why a diagnosis of CFS should never be accepted by doctor or by patient as an endpoint of the process of diagnosis. The creation of the flawed disease category of CFS and the equally flawed government policies that have gone along with it have had a devastating effect on the hundreds of thousands of ME sufferers around the world, including young children. These very ill patients are often denied appropriate medical treatment and care denied appropriate insurance entitlements and other medical benefits and are often accused of malingering by doctors, welfare agencies and the media and in turn even by their own friends and family. ME patients are also routinely recommended or forced to participate in inappropriate or harmful psychologically based interventions while basic appropriate medical care is withheld. These harmful interventions and the lack of basic medical care have had disastrous and long-term physical effects on many sufferers. In some cases, this has resulted in death. Patients with ME are not the only patient group to be negatively affected, however, by the CFS fiction. Other patients misdiagnosed as CFS that have other diseases and illnesses are also denied appropriate diagnosis and treatment very often. They may also be subjected to inappropriate psychological intervention. Doctors, researchers and the general public are also negatively affected in various ways by the CFS subterfuge. The only groups which gain from the CFS confusion are insurance companies and various other organisations and corporations which have a vested financial interest in how these patients are treated, including the government. The only way forward for every group involved is that the disease category of CFS must be abandoned. Each of the patient groups involved must be correctly diagnosed and then treated as appropriate based on legitimate and unbiased science involving the same patient group, which is not what is happening now. People with ME must be diagnosed with ME and treated for ME. Patients with depression must be diagnosed and treated for depression. Patients with cancer should be treated for cancer and so on. Lumping these disparate patient groups together under a vague and meaningless category of fatiguing illnesses or CFS only hinders each of the patients involved in their battle to regain their health. What a diagnosis of CFS usually means is that the patient has a gradual onset fatigue syndrome which is usually due to a missed major disease. What this means is that the patient has A. Missed cardiac disease B. Missed malignancy C. Missed vascular disease D. Missed brain lesion, either of a vascular or space occupying lesion E. 
missed test, test positive rheumatological disease, F, missed test negative rheumatologic disease, G, missed endocrine disease, H, missed physiological disease, I, missed genetic disease, J, missed chronic infectious disease, K, missed pharmacological or immunisation induced disease, L, missed social disease, M, missed drug use disease or habituation, N, missed dietary dysfunction diseases, or O, missed psychiatric disease. Some of the illnesses commonly misdiagnosed as CFS include the following. Various post-viral fatigue states or post-viral fatigue syndrome, for example, following glandular fever or mononucleosis, Q fever or hepatitis, fibromyalgia, candida infections, athlete's overtraining syndrome, burnout, multiple chemical sensitivity syndrome, multiple sclerosis, thyroid illness, adrenal insufficiency, malignancies, brain tumours, transverse myelitis, myopathic illnesses including mitochondrial myopathies, various vitamin B12 deficiency disorders, rheumatoid illness or lupus, sarcoma, renal or liver disease, infectious illnesses including toxoplasmosis, AIDS, Lyme disease or tuberculosis, and also various psychiatric and social psychiatric states including anxiety neurosis, reactive depression, clinical depression, psychopathic personality disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder, schizophrenia and miscellaneous other psychiatric disease. Of course, this is not a complete list. ME expert Dr Elizabeth Dowsett explains that there are actually 30 well-documented causes of chronic fatigue. It should also be remembered that although none of the CFS definitions define ME, the majority of those that have ME will be given a CFS diagnosis, misdiagnosis, by default due to the ignorance surrounding ME and the confusion with CFS. Therefore, the possibility that a patient misdiagnosed with CFS has authentic ME should also be investigated, along with these myriad other possibilities. While it's true that many with ME are diagnosed as having CFS, this does not mean that CFS is the same thing as ME. The vast majority of patients diagnosed with CFS do not have ME. The vast majority of information written about CFS, almost all of it, has nothing to do with ME, is not about ME, and does not involve ME patients. Patients with all sorts of different illnesses are commonly misdiagnosed as having CFS. Under cover of the bogus disease category of CFS, this diverse mix of patients are treated as if they each suffered the exact same specific illness. This is clearly unscientific, unethical, and completely illogical. Patients must be given the opportunity to be diagnosed correctly if they had had any chance of appropriate treatment or recovery, not given a meaningless CFS misdiagnosis. Patients with ME need this same opportunity. Treating this diverse and heterogeneous patient group as if their illnesses each shared the same symptoms, etiology, pathology, and response to treatment is completely inappropriate and highly unlikely to benefit the health and well-being of any patient involved. Treating this CFS group, this mixed group, as if they each shared a specific psychological or behavioural illness is also completely inappropriate. Aside from representing a heterogeneous patient group, many, probably the vast majority, of those with the diagnosis of CFS are not mentally ill and do not suffer from behavioural problems. This includes, of course, those patients that have ME. For the benefit of all the patient groups involved, doctors must return to the age-old medical principles of correct diagnosis, which means taking a careful medical history, doing a detailed physical examination, and conducting the appropriate test. As Dr Byron Hyde explained, 30 years ago, when a patient presented to a hospital clinic with unexplained fatigue, any medical school physician would have told the students to search for an occult malignancy, cardiac or other organ disease or, or a chronic infection. The concept that there is an entity called chronic fatigue syndrome has totally altered that essential medical guideline. Patients are now being diagnosed with CFS as though it were a disease. It is not. 
It is a patchwork of symptoms that could mean anything. Physicians who diagnose CFS in any patient experiencing new onset fatigue or experiencing new extreme limits in their activity levels, which can be mistaken for fatigue, without looking and testing for the true cause of the symptoms, do their patients and themselves a great disservice. As Dr Elizabeth Dowsett explains, there is no such disease as CFS. Some of the conditions commonly misdiagnosed as CFS are very well defined and well known illnesses and very treatable or even curable, but only once they have been correctly diagnosed. Some conditions are also very serious or can even be fatal if not correctly diagnosed and managed and that includes myalgic encephalomyelitis. Every patient deserves the best possible opportunity for appropriate treatment for their illness and for recovery. This process must begin with a correct diagnosis, if at all possible. A correct diagnosis is half the battle won.